I'm Adam Hill and welcome to Adam DIY. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this electric scooter and I'm going to show you how to test each of the components. So hopefully by the end of this video you can narrow down what's wrong with yours. So to do the testing you will need a multimeter. You can get a super cheap one if you want, but if you're going to do any kind of electronics in the future you might want to spend at least $50 on a, a good one because it'll just do a lot more, it'll be a lot more accurate and it'll be worth it in the long run. This one's auto ranging. This one you have to click through every setting. They're just, it's just not worth it if you plan on doing any kind of testing in the future. So let me show you what setting to use here. Right over here, it's got the uh, ohms for resistance. There's a diode setting and continuity all on the same one. So I'm gonna click it over there and you can see the display shows ohms. I'm gonna hit select. Now it's in diode mode. Select again, continuity. You see that little speaker thing up there. It's got a light on, which is pretty handy. So when we test the wires on this scooter, if there's a break in the wire, it won't make a noise. But if the wire's good, you'll hear, uh, hear this beep. And if you hear that, you know there's a continuity. This one is found, I think these are red now. So if you go to Walmart or buy these online, it's gonna look just like this, but red. And it's a little nicer than this, but still, to me, not worth the money. I'd invest in a better one. And I'll put links in the video description. But if you go down to ohms, there's a little horseshoe there. The ohm symbol looks like a horseshoe. And you can check out this display. See, it has a one on it now. But if I hit these contacts together, it's gonna change. So you'll know, okay, there's a, a good wire there. There's not a break in the line. Before we test the scooter, let's test this charger. I'm gonna plug it in. And uh, by the way, this says output 24 volts. Here's a look at the end of the plug. And these top two are the ones we're gonna insert our leads into. It says one, two, three. And this is a generic plug. So it doesn't matter which lead you put in where because we're just going to uh, be testing it on DC voltage. 27 volts. So this charger's good. And by the way, you might also want to wiggle this around while you're testing it just to see if it fluctuates here. If it does, you could have a kink inside or a broken wire inside, something like that that's uh, stopping it from charging the batteries. What we're going to do here is turn it on. And we get a nice light there. Maybe you got that, maybe you don't. Well, we're gonna go through the testing and find out. So there is a power to this whole thing. One part that fails often is this controller box. It's the brains for the scooter. I have a rubber band on it because I'm gonna show you the insides in a second. But this should make a noise if it's good. There's a relay in there. Let me show you the throttle. If I come up here and spin this throttle like that, you should hear a click noise coming from this box. Hear that? It's very obvious. If you hear no click and you know it's getting power, you tested the batteries going to it, something's wrong. Either your throttle's bad and those wires aren't working or this is messed up. So inside here are these two relays. You can't really um, fix much in here unless you really know what you're doing. So I would suggest just buying a whole replacement controller box. Um, they're easy to find. I'll put links in the video description. You can see it here. Uh, it comes with all the same connectors as you will need, so it's a really easy swap. It's no trouble at all. Um, what we'll do here is disconnect this battery. If you push down on this, you can release it. And that goes with all of these connectors. And I have this set to volts DC. Each battery is 12 volts. Let's see if we're getting at least 24 volts show up on our meter. So I'm going to insert one on the left, one on the right, inside here. It doesn't matter which way you go. The only th difference will be you'll see a negative mark on there if you have them backwards. Uh, so we have 25 and a half volts. So these batteries are good. Let's say you have a, a much lower reading and it should be at a full charge. You can test the batteries themselves. If I go to these two connections here, you can see 12 volts. You might have to uh, pull off the connectors here. So insert this one here 
and the black one's there and this one reads almost 13 both of these batteries are good okay if not if you have one that's reading you know one's reading 12 or whatever and the other one's reading eight or six time to get some new batteries and I would suggest just buying two and replacing both of them so for whatever reason maybe you have a break in one of these wires let's find out I'll move it over here to continuity again and I will touch you see these inside here has three little prongs and I will touch the meter on these see if I get a beep let's go to this one yep so both of these are good wires this third wire goes up to here I meant to say the third prong let me touch that one and let's see if we get a yeah so that third wire goes right here to this on off switch The controller box has all these wires coming out. The one that goes to the throttle is going to be this one here with the two orange, two brown. Um, so that's four wires total. If I pull that clip down, I can release it. Let's just take all of them off. This one is to the uh, brake. This one goes to the motor. You can't mess these up. These yellow go to the on-off switch. Let's just take this whole thing out, give us some room. All of these are keyed. There's no way you're gonna plug the thing in wrong, so don't worry about it. Okay, so here we go. Now, the throttle has two switches inside. One that hooks up with the orange wires, the other one that hooks up the, with the brown wires. So we're gonna take our meter. And I will shove these leads in matching sides. So shove them there in the orange side. And we're still at continuity. So if I come up here and I'm gonna pull the throttle, we should hear a beep. So we know that switch is good. There's another one in there. So we're gonna test the brown. There we go. Now let me come up and pull the throttle. So we know that those are good. Because we heard the beep. If you didn't hear a beep, you will need a new throttle. And how do you replace that? Well, the, all of this is one whole unit. Um, to take this off, you're gonna just pull this grip straight out. After you pull the grip off, you're gonna undo this little screw there with an Allen wrench, and the whole thing will slip off. Um, it's not really worth it to try to open up the throttle and re uh, repair it because those parts and switches are so small It's best just to get a new one and I'll put the link to that in the description as well The other wires coming out of the front are the brake wires and this is an easy test Because it should beep without you hitting the brake If I can get these leads in you'll hear the beep Okay, and when I pull the brake lever it'll stop Also right here where the wires go in, there's a little switch and you should hear a click when you pull the brake. Usually when you hear a click, it means the switch is good. Not always, but usually. This little thing on the side is a safety trip in case the uh, voltage surges. It should beep all the time. It's got a little button on the front that you can push to reset it. So if you don't hear a beep, then that might be a problem. But usually this is not gonna be an issue. The power switch is down here, so that's on. If I turn it off, I'm not gonna hear these two beep, just like that, okay? So on these bottom two leads. So that's most everything. This wire here is for the motor. So a motor will have a certain amount of resistance, and I don't know what a brand new motor will test at, but I know this one works, so this will give you a really good idea of the resistance of a working motor. You can see this big, thick wire. This one goes straight through the back to the motor. So I have it on this little horseshoe setting there and that's the resistance setting if you remember. How many ohms of resistance are we going to find? So one lead here, one lead here, doesn't matter which one. So we're going up to 5.23 
So that is a good measurement. If you get something totally different, your motor might be burned out. We tested everything, we know it's all good, but you know, you might have this problem where you turn it on, you know the battery's good, you know the controller's good, you hear the click, hear that? But still the wheel's not spinning. And that's because you need to give the uh, scooter a bit of a boost before it um, kicks the motor on. And that's just because it's gonna take so much torque to get a kid from a dead stop to moving speed that um, the scooter waits till you're giving it a bit of a push before it kicks on the motor. So now I have the wheel hanging over the back edge. If I pull the throttle, you'll hear the click of the relay and I can give this wheel a bit of a boost and it'll start. See that? So don't worry if <laughs> you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? It's usually that. All right, well, success. I hope it's been a help to you. If so, go ahead and click like and subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. I upload how-tos, repairs. A lot of it's home-related, but not always like this. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Don't forget to check the links in the description below for, um, you know, if you need new parts or something, I'll just link them to Amazon. You can get them off there. And uh, that'll be it. Check out my other videos. Maybe some of them will help you as well. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.